Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this. I'm gonna keep this in a blog post as well, so welcome to the blog post. Um, today, I wanted to go in depth on my savings strategies. Um, I love finances. It is like my other my other love. Like a, It's like a hobby for me. I love studying finances. I love studying personal finances especially. And uh, savings accounts are something that I've really loved to almost curate um, and I have been curating a process for um, my savings for years. Um, I do want to put out some disclaimers because when you talk about finances things can get a little uncomfortable. Some people get really weird about talking about money and of course I'm not going to go um, too in depth on like my personal like numbers or anything but I'm going to give as much information as I can um, because I I also really value transparency. Um, but a disclaimer that I did want to put out is, of course, like the main one that we all know, but it's worth saying, is that everybody is different. And so me sharing my process is a way for me to show you my way of doing things, and then I want you to go through and pull out what is necessary, or not necessary, but what is relevant to you. Uh, this is not a, this is exactly how you do things. This is a, hey, this is how I do things. And if there's something that's helpful for you, please take it. This is my gift for you. Another thing that I want to mention is that this process in savings, although that, you know, I've, I've worked with it for many, many years and um, with anything, you just get better at it. But this is the same process that I've been using since I started bas babysitting, used this process through college when I had multiple jobs. Um, or and multiple jobs but still a very very low income and then I've also used this process when I was on salary and so this is something that can translate through all different types uh, types of uh, financial situations and I've carried it through any financial situations that I've gone through um, so with that said let's get started I have a notebook so that I can just keep myself straight and make sure that I'm hitting all the points that I want to for you guys and so this actually was inspired by a question that I got on my Instagram from a friend and she um, said I want to make sure I got her question right so she said what's your best advice on savings if I don't have a savings account so uh, first answer of this is really really easy it's just get one um, and that um, is an easy thing to say but then you have to know exactly how your bank goes through with savings accounts and a lot of times there will be different savings accounts um the different savings accounts are com like it's not something that i am super aware of but if i ever have a question i just call my bank and when i was first setting up a savings account that's all i did was i would call my bank and they were able to tell me what savings account would be best for me um, this is going to depend on how much you um, are anticipating that you are going to be dipping into your savings, which for me and my advice to you is next to none. Um, so my savings accounts, I believe I can take out of each twice a month. And then after that, I believe I get penalized, but I haven't taken out of my savings in however long. And that's not something that I plan to do. I'm not planning to dip into my savings at all. And so that for me was best. Um, you also want to know how much of a minimum, if there is a minimum on savings accounts. I'm not a huge fan of minimums um, because we're just um, in the beginning, I had an issue with, I think the minimum was like $50, but at that time, $50 was a lot for me. And so the process of actually saving up $50 to start a savings account was really annoying. Um, but that might be something that you're going to... Um, that might be something you're going to run into. So be aware that there might be a minimum. Um, and then, you know, you just get yourself up to a certain amount for that minimum. And then you can kind of start your automatic processes. So all that's to say, get yourself a savings account. Um, if you have the mobile, your mobile banking apps, a lot of times you can actually set up savings accounts through your mobile banking app. And that is what I do. I use my mobile banking app like it's social media. I love going on my mobile banking app. But that's because I'm neurotic. <laughs> it's not something that I would um, like recommend or like a practice that I'm saying is really, really good. Um, but 
in your mobile banking apps, that's where you can actually control um, your savings, your savings accounts, um, auto drafts, those kind of things. And so number one thing, get yourself a mobile banking app. And number two, get yourself a savings account, even if it's just one. I say even if it's just one, because I have several. Um, and I'm not going to go into exactly how many and all that kind of stuff, but I do want to explain why I have several banking accounts or several savings accounts. When you're first getting started, obviously, I started saving when I believe, I want to say I started saving when I was 14. And I, I had only had one savings account for many, 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 many years. I think that was how I did it into my college years, where I would only have one savings account and that's what I would dump into. But then one day it occurred to me that I wasn't completely sure of the purpose of that savings account. And this might be a mindset that is holding you back because I think it's a mindset that holds a lot of people back. It's hard to get excited about putting money into something or an account when you don't know the purpose. So when somebody would ask me what my savings account's for, I would say emergencies. When I wanna buy a car, um, it could be a down payment on a house. It could like, there's just too much. And then I realized, okay, this isn't gonna do me any good if I don't actually have a purpose for this savings account. So the first, if you're only starting with one savings account and if you don't have a savings account at all, only start with one. That one needs to be an emergency savings account. The good thing about this account is that there is a, a cap. Let me say, there doesn't have to be a cap, but this has helped me feel like I'm not constantly dumping into an emergency savings for no real reason. An emergency savings account, there should be a goal. And of course, goals are very, very motivating. Your goal is to either have three months, six months, or you know, you could really go three, six, nine, 12, but at the point where you're at nine, you might as well go to 12 to me, um, of expenses. So for, and that's going to depend on you. Um, I right now am trying to save up to have three months of expenses into my savings account. And then once I get to three months, I can say, okay, awesome. Now I can go to six months, but say your um, monthly expenses, this is everything that you may need. This is rent. This is um, any bills that you have. This is groceries. This is gas. These are your necessities and you should be able to know how much your life costs per month for the essentials. That you will know based on your um, budget system. And I say budget, when I say budget, I don't mean little envelopes and keeping, um, okay, you can only spend this much on this and this. I don't do that. I have an Excel sheet um, and so that is my, what, a financial report or an easy way for me to just call it a budget. Um, and so based on that budget, I can tell you at any given point how much my life costs per month. Of course, I'm not gonna do that, but that's how you'll know how much your life costs per month. I would do an audit with yourself to see what your bills are and, and you should know your number of how much your life costs a month. Um, and I will go into my budget system at a different time. Um, because I have an Excel template that I share with my friends and it is a system that's worked really, really well for me and I think may work well for you as well. So at some other point I will explain budgeting, but today of course we're just gonna talk about savings. So your emergency savings account should be three months. I would say start with three months because it's just start with something little. Um, it's easier to work your way up. So then if, say your life costs, and I'm just gonna make it easy math for me, $1,000 a month is how much you have to have. That covers your rent, that covers your groceries, that covers your gas, whatever. So $1,000 a month, that means in your emergency savings fund, your goal is to reach $3,000. The great thing is that once you reach $3,000, you can stop because you, will have covered yourself for three months. Say if you lost your job, if you no longer have an income, you can say, I'm not sweating it. I have three months to figure it out, which is great. Um, if you so choose, then you can go up to six months and then your goal is $6,000. And again, you can tap out. What I like about having that emergency savings fund like cap or goal is that I know that at some point I won't have to be investing into that anymore because I will have reached a monetary goal that will cover me for what I need. There's no longer a need for me to be dumping, dumping, dumping into this emergency fund. 
So that's what I really like about your emergency fund and that is why that should be the very first savings account that you have. I have dipped into my emergency savings account before. Um, somebody asked me, um, I was talking to a friend and she asked like, what do I do if I have an emergency, like I need to get a new tire or something like that. Tires are a very big expense and to some people that's emergency, some people that's just something that you pay for. Um, this is something that will go into, um, in the budgeting, but so say I pop a tire and it's going to cost me $300. I'm again, I'm just making up numbers, just easy math. Don't come at me if these numbers don't seem realistic to you, whatever. Anyway, so say this tire is going to cost me $300, depending on my, how much money I have left per month. Like if I've spent a ton that month and I don't have $300 or I'm going to need that $300 for the rest of the month in order to survive, then I will take it out of my emergency fund knowing that myself I will be depositing in that fund monthly as I always do and I will be replenishing that. Um, and so however many months it takes for me to go back up to that $300, you know, that may be two months, three months, whatever, you know, depending on how much you deposit a month, I know that I'll be replenishing that and so I technically owe myself. If I'm at a place where I can afford that based on my monthly budget and it's not gonna you know, wreck me and I'm gonna still have enough money for anything that I need, I'll pay it out of pocket because I would much rather take it out of that monthly, um, like what I have to spend for that month because when that month is over, it reboots. So say I have zero dollars left for the month on the last day, the next day when the next month starts, okay, then it goes right back up to whatever that monthly spending amount is. Um, so that's, I try to use as much as my monthly fund for it if I can. Um, that also might mean if I can only really afford $150 from that month's um, fund, um, then I'll pay $150 out of my monthly fund and then I will take some out of my savings, $150 out of my savings to pay for it and now I only owe myself $150. When I say monthly fund, this goes back to my budget, I have also at any given time have in my Excel sheet I can see how much money I have left to spend for that month and that is already accounting a savings deposit, that's already accounting any expenses that I have. So I always have a little box in that Excel sheet that tells me how much money I can spend and that's that's all mine. That's you know groceries are already allotted for, gas is already allotted for, it's all mine to spend on what I want. Again, that will go that it's a that's a longer video. <laughs> we'll go into that for the budgeting. So we have your emergency fund. Now let's talk about why I have multiple savings accounts. I it, this goes back to when I was asking myself what's the purpose of this savings account? And part, one, I'll, for here's an example, so part of my savings account to me was not only emergency but was for travel, which doesn't make any sense that I would have both because then when I want to go on a trip, say I have, again, I'm just making up numbers, $1,000 in that savings account, how much can I take out for that trip versus how much is for my emergency fund? I had no idea. So then it occurred to me to make a travel savings account. That is something that is of course important for me and that is a way that I, that was a priority I had. I wanted to have a savings account to be able to save up for trips because that is something that I enjoy and that is something that I prioritize in my, in something that I will always deposit coming from my income. Um, that is not for everybody. That is more of a um, that's even more of a luxury expense, but that's an example of if you have something that you prioritize, i.e. maybe you want to buy a car, or maybe you, I don't know, prioritize, maybe for, you have a hobby, um, that uh, maybe you, your hobby is video editing, so then you know that you're going to put $10 away into this other account, a savings account, that when you want to buy another piece of equipment, you can go into that savings account and that is how much you have allotted yourself to buy only for video equipment. So my travel fund, I don't have to feel guilt about taking money out of that travel fund because if I'm going on a trip, that is exactly what that money is for. In my head, that money can't be used for anything else. So it doesn't feel like a loss. It's like a gift to myself that I gave myself a long, long time ago and I keep giving to myself every month. I hope that makes sense. 
<clears throat> so I have multiple savings accounts based on things that I prioritize. Um, I also re prioritize retirement and so that's something and again, that's another video, um, but that is something that I would also look into once you've get, gotten your emergency fund um, and, and that kind of process for you, your emergency savings account in place, I would start looking at a retirement fund. All right, so we are actually already 20 minutes into this video and I still have a lot to go over and my next thing I wanted to talk about is how to save money. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make this a video and then I'm going to immediately make a separate video on how to save money, how you actually get money to put in those savings accounts, especially if you don't have a very large income. Um, what I want you to take away from this one, so we've talked about making savings accounts, why to have savings accounts, what savings accounts you should set up if you're just getting started, and then how to use savings accounts to your advantage based on your priorities. If you're just getting started, set up a savings account and make an emergency fund. Make a goal based on you're going to start out your three month monthly expenses. That's how much that you are going to be, you know, wanting to put in that savings account before you can stop or then you can move on to a six month goal if that's what works for you. If you already have a savings account and an emergency savings account, you're feeling really good about your practice, next is to think about your retirement fund. Um, do your research and go through my personal advice, unless you are a professional investor, go through an external company. I highly recommend Edward Jones because um, I've just, I work with them and I love them. Um, I really hope that this video was helpful um, and if you want to know how to actually have money to put into those savings accounts, please watch the next video. All right, I'll see you guys next time.